Um, we will be starting in just a minute. We're just going to let people come in and take their seats. Um, thanks so much for being with us this sunny afternoon. Well, it's sunny where I am. Uh, and we'll start in just a minute or so um, once everybody's in um, and uh, then we'll get started. Thanks so much for joining us. Just um, about half a minute and then we'll um, crack on and make a start. Um, we're so grateful you've joining us. Hey everybody, it's really great that you're here with us uh, and we can join together on this Tuesday afternoon. Thank you, thank you so much for joining us. Um, my name is uh, Chris Russell. I am the Archbishop of Canterbury's Advisor on Evangelism and Witness and it has been my absolute joy and uh, honour to be involved in Thy Kingdom Come over these last years. Um, we're really, really excited that you're here for this launch um, uh, event and um, let, let me just tell you what we're going to do. Um, in a moment I'm going to pray and then um, Archbishop Justin has recorded a video for us um, about TKC this year. Uh, then I'm just going to kind of put a bit of scriptural context um, for what you're going to hear. Uh, and then after that, um, Emma um, Buchan, who is the brains behind the whole thing and the person that makes it happen, Emma is going to come and tell us something of the story so far. Bob will then tell us about something about the international perspective. Um, remember, TKC happened in 90% of countries around the world last year. Um, then uh, Emma is going to come and share with us some stats that have led um, particularly to the things that we're going to concentrate on this year. And then it's resource time. We're going to look at all the resources, um, the stuff that's available in hard copy. Um, Emma will tell you about the stuff that is available digitally. Kemi will come and uh, um, show us all and tell us about that, uh, because we really, really want to, everything to be resourced this year. Um, uh, as usual. And then Jean's going to come and talk to us about training. Now, of course, there'll be lots of questions. And so put your questions um, in the, there's apparently a question and answer place for you to put them here on Zoom, um, or you can just put them in the chat. Um, so keep the questions coming. We'll answer those at the end. Um, but just to say again, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. We really hope and pray that this time for us um, is uh, inspiring and also sets a bit of a fire in our hearts um, at what God might be wanting to do and being uh, able to do and raising our sights and our expectations for thy kingdom come 2021. Um, as we start, we're going to pray, uh, and the prayer, the Thy Kingdom Come prayer is going to come on the screen. I'll pray I that, and then um, we'll go to Archbishop Justin. Um, let us pray. The Son has sent us into the world to preach the good news of your kingdom. of your love that all who hear your word may be drawn to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, now over to Archbishop Justin. This year, Thy Kingdom Come will look different. It must look different because of all that we've been through over the last 12 months. It's been a year that none of us will ever forget. We've all had to learn new ways of connecting. And one of those for which we're hugely grateful is through technology. All of us have become more tech savvy. Even I have become more tech savvy. There are two sides to the whole issue of technology in the ministry of the church. For some people, for most of us to some degree, it, there's something left out. 
and a number of people have drifted away from participation in worship because they simply can't get with the whole thing of taking part while looking at someone on a screen. But there's been some incredible blessings. One of them is that huge numbers of people have joined in because they can do so and just taste what Christian worship is about without physically having to go through a door. So how can we celebrate these 10 days of Thy Kingdom Come prayer this year in two ways? First, we're going to pray for the people who have drifted away. And secondly, we're going to pray for those who've just been tasting, that they see the wonder and the love of Christ, and that as they draw close to the church, they see also the remarkable things the church has been doing. Because as well as on the all the online stuff, the church has been reaching out physically right around the world. In the UK, it's been extraordinary with food banks and debt camps thing and company and ringing people up and caring for people and looking after them in the most phenomenal way. The heart of it is beautifully simple, which is to pray. Whether you've got any of the resources or none of the resources, actually, that's fine. Pray. You're invited to pray in the period between Ascension Day and Pentecost with Christians around the world from every denomination and tradition you can think of to pray that more people will come to know the love of God in Jesus Christ. We're all called to pray for five. Five friends, family, neighbours, that they would know Christ. What a difference that will make as collectively we pray for those we love and over the last year will have loved in so many different ways. And this is the greatest offering of love we can bring. Thank you. Um, thanks so much to um, Archbishop Justin for that. So um, what he he has done in that is to set up um, the particular themes uh, for Thy Kingdom Come this year. Uh, and I'm just going to say something for four minutes or so around um, some of the reasons that we've been drawn to those uh, through Scripture. Uh, we know that um, in Scripture, the stories of the kingdom are regularly stories that Jesus tells where things that have been lost are found or that extraordinary treasure is found in the ground or a pearl of great price is found and it's worth selling everything for. Over the last six years, thy kingdom come has consistently been pitched at concentrating the time between Ascension and Pentecost, particularly in prayer for the empowering of the spirit that we might uh, recommit to our primary vocation as Christians, to be those through whom Christ makes his appeal of reconciliation. Come home to Jesus. So we have prayed for the church to be renewed in the power of the spirit, that we might be effective in evangelism, that we might declare and proclaim the good news of Christ. We've prayed for the work of the spirit in uh, the, the lives of particularly five friends and family. And, and I've continued to pray during the year for those five, five friends, that the Spirit would work in them in their hearts and minds and hands and ears, that they may be open to the invitation of Christ to them. And we have prayed for the empowering of the Spirit in each of our lives that we might be, we might be effective witnesses to Jesus Christ. So we've prayed for evangelism in the church through the Spirit. We've prayed for the work of the Spirit in the lives of non-Christian friends. And we've prayed for the work of the Spirit in our lives that we might be effective witnesses. And this year we commit to that again. We will always commit to praying for the Holy Spirit to empower our witness. But discerning the particular theme for this year, we had a sense that God is leading us um, through 
uh, an understanding of the times that we're in and some data that um, Emma will share with you to commit particularly to pray for two groups of people that we believe Christ has come to find. Uh, and so uh, quickly um, in Luke 15, Luke 15, Charles Dickens um, said was uh, a collection of the greatest stories ever told. You, you might remember the lost stories. Jesus tells these stories, the story of the lost sheep, the story of the lost coin and the story of the lost sons. Uh, he tells these stories in answer to the questions that are being put to him about by the religious leaders about why he is eating with sinners and tax collectors. What is he doing this for? And does he not understand what, if he's a representative of God, what his presence with them might mean and his welcome to them? And so Jesus tells these stories. The first story is of those who've wandered off and are in great danger unless they're found. And so in order to find this one sheep, we remember that the shepherd goes to the ludicrous lengths of, of counting this one sheep worth so much that they leave 99 to go and find it. My experience of the church, by the way, is something rather different. We don't have 99, we have one. Uh, and we would rather stay with the one than go after the 99, but, but that's a different story. So we will do this. We will, we will pray that those who are, are away, are far, far away, would be brought home. Uh, but then the second story. And I never really understood the second story until I read Kenneth, Bailey, Kenneth Bailey's book on the Good Shepherd. Uh, it's the story of the woman who loses the coin in the house. She does everything, turns everything upside down until she finds it. Now, of course, Jesus is talking about his own ministry in these two parables. The first is his ministry of going after those who are absolutely in danger and going to rescue them. Those are the tax collectors and sinners. But then the second story is of those who are equally lost. They've not wandered away down a cliff, but they're lost and they're lost inside the house. You can be lost inside the house which is why I think he's telling the story, because that's what's happened to the, the Pharisees and the religious leaders. Now, we know that our, our um, Roman Catholic brothers and sisters talk about evangelism and evangelization, and I find the distinction between the two helpful for us this year. Evangelism is uh, the proclamation of the good news to people who've never heard it, to whom it is good news, and it's news. They've never, ever heard this at all. And our prayer is that those people would be gripped by the wonderful, wonderful, almost too good, too good to be imagined news that uh, God has come for them in Christ. But evangelization is for those who were part of the church, but have gone off the boil, are, are count themselves increasingly away, are, are lost. They've been in the house, but they're still lost. And so this year at Thy Kingdom Come, we pray particularly for both groups. We pray for those, you, you might know these people. These people might be those who you worshipped with, uh, maybe even this time last year, but they, this time has seen them for all sorts of reasons, just distancing and distancing and distancing, not just from the community of faith, but from the faith itself. And so we sense a, a stirring in our spirits of the Holy Spirit, inspiring us and encouraging us to make these two particular groups of people, those who are the focus of our prayers this year. Empowering, seeking the empowering of the spirit on our corporate and personal witness for those who are far away and those who are near. I'm, I'm gonna hand over now to Emma, who is gonna tell us something of the story so far. Thank you so much, Chris. Um, and as Chris um, said, I concur. Um, it's been an absolute delight and honour to be involved in Thy Kingdom Come over the last five years. Um, as I say, my name's Emma Buchan and I have, I'm the project director for Thy Kingdom Come. And it's wonderful today to be part of the e and webinar series with this um, webinar. And if you enjoy it, there are many more down the line as well um, of other inspirational uh, webinars, we hope. 
Um, I'd like to share with you today just a little bit of the story so far. Owen, if you'd be willing. Thank you. Yeah. Can I have the next slide? For Thy Kingdom Come, in 2016, the Archbishops of Canterbury and York invited parishes across England to pray between Ascension and Pentecost, praying for people to come to know the, the amazing love of Jesus Christ. Praying for the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, that we would be effective in our witness for Jesus Christ, so that our friends and families and neighbours and colleagues discover and experience from, for themselves the difference that Jesus makes. Now, in just, um, well, as I say, this launched in 2019. So in just five, uh, tw sorry, 2016, if I get my dates right, in just five years, we've seen Christians in nearly 90% of countries worldwide participate. We'll talk a little bit more about that later when I hand over to my colleague, Bob. Um, next slide, please. Um, we've also seen um, one of the wonderful things about Thy Kingdom Come, I think, is the ecumenism in action. And we've seen many traditions and many, many denominations get involved, from Salvation Army to the Methodists and Baptists to the Redeemed Church of God. If we could go to the next slide. Um, as I say, we, um, we really believe that um, TKC does exemplify ecumenism in action. And if we look just at last year's Pentecost service, we had contributions contributions from his from the Pope, um, His Holiness Pope Francis and Archbishop Justin Welby, worship from um, Matt Redman um, and testimony from Thelma Comey, prayers from Pastor Agu and Archbishop Angelos. In that list, you have the Catholic Church, the Orthodox Church, the Methodist Church, the Pentecostal Church, the Anglican Church, all represented. Next slide, please. And um, this, um, one of the great other parts where we saw a wonderful, wonderful um, celebration for Pentecost Sunday was in Trafalgar Square in 2019. I think we had something like 15,000 Christians worshipping together in Trafalgar Square. Um, it was a really joyous day. And if we think of the time we live in now, it's, it, it seems inconceivable that we could be doing that again soon, but let's pray and hope we can. Um, and on that day, um, on the stage, um, I was always, I'm always struck by this photo of the, um, the CTE presidents kneeling, praying together. It's just beautiful to see that across the traditions, across the denominations, we can join in prayer, unite our voices in prayer, praying for our friends and families and loved ones to come to Christ. Next slide, please. So just really quickly to run through, how do we get involved? We've, we've stuck to the same for the last five years. We really focus on individuals, families and churches. And when asked what people are praying for, next slide, please, Owen. 91% um, of people are actually praying for friends and families to come to know Jesus and how to tell um, more people about it. We found that 60%, 66% of churches felt that their congregation members were more fired up to share the, the love of Jesus Christ. So in conclusion, the scope of Thy Kingdom Come, and we've seen millions of Christians around the world get involved, and it's we've actually translated all of our resources into more than 10 languages. We are really delighted to work across the traditions and across the denominations. We've seen um, parts of Thy Kingdom Come tele televised globally. Um, and as I say, we've seen engagement, you know, on the BBC Pentecost service, or we've had the Trafalgar Square celebration, and we've seen international engagement. Now, I'd love to, to for Bob Key, my dear colleague, to share with you a little bit more about the international engagement before we move on to the plans for this year. Bob, over to you. Emma, thank you very much indeed. Uh, I wonder if uh, we might have my first slide. It is true that uh, we've reached 170 plus countries before taking this role on. I retired as Her Majesty's Dean of Jersey. That's that small island off the coast of France. So to go from looking after a small jurisdiction of 110,000 people, now to have relationships with folk all over the world is just a wonderful foretaste of the glory of heaven. This morning at five o'clock, uh, my phone pinged beside my bed. I looked at it so that it didn't ping again and wake my wife. And it was from Bishop Pontian, Bishop of uh, the Diocese of Rutana in Burundi. And uh, they have taken on Thy Kingdom Come. 
it's from South Sudan to South Korea, Australia to Austria. Next slide, please. The important thing when it does go is that every culture makes it its own because the church in every place is different. Uh, in the Maori tradition in Aotearoa, New Zealand, uh, they have translated resources into Maori. The Archbishop of York's uh, prayer journal is being translated uh, even as we speak. And it's really important to them that it becomes part of their culture and is done in their way. And that's not just true uh, of New Zealand. Let's just move one, one country across. Next slide, please. And uh, South Australia, one rector from South Australia wrote to us and said, when she learned of thy kingdom come, this is the most exciting communication I've ever had from the Anglican church. And I have to say, after more than 40 years of ministry, and I can't remember how many communications from the Anglican church, I think she's right, because this is dynamic, it's exciting, and it's about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, this is about pointing people to come home to Jesus, not just for time, but for all eternity. I was privileged just before we all had to stop flying this time last year to go to Japan and Korea. And the bishop who was my host there was Bishop Augustine of the great city of Kobe. And uh, I think Mark is now going to share a video that Augustine has sent us. Hello everyone, I am Augustine Kobayashi, Bishop of Kobe in Japan. Two years ago, I attended a training session for new bishops at Canterbury Cathedral. At that time, we were introduced to the Thy Kingdom Come project. I returned to Japan and told the other Japanese bishops about this movement. They were excited and all agreed that the Anglican Church in Japan should join in with Thy Kingdom Come. After preparing for a year, we participated from last year. But then COVID-19 happened. Many churches were closed. Our world was turned upside down, and everything didn't go smoothly. So this year, we all worked together harder than before to get everything translated and distributed so all churches can prepare in enough time, and so that everybody can take part in this very important event. Especially, we hope to strongly promote the idea of praying for five, so that many others in this country and around the world can come to know the love and the blessings of Jesus. Please pray for thy kingdom come in Japan. Thank you. They were so excited about this year's prayer journal that one of their new bishops took Stephen Cottrell's journal home and translated it overnight. So it's ready to go in Japan. And we're so excited when places make it their own from a soup kitchen in Toronto to photos of uh, gather Christians gathering in Bangladesh. Very simple uh, a home, single roomed house, people sitting on the floor around candles to make sure that uh, they can pray for their friends to come to know and love the Lord Jesus Christ. Next slide, please. In Sri Lanka, uh, their director of prayer sends out a daily prayer letter every day of thy kingdom come to 500 prayer warriors. A uh, wonderful phrase for those who are committed to pray. Next slide, please. In Brazil, Bishop Francisco, 
who's translated the prayer journal into Portuguese for us, said that he was writing to all his clergy to get in, encouraging them to get involved in thy kingdom come. And when I was in Australia, around the staff table of the Archbishop of Melbourne, one of his bishops said to me, Bob, keep it simple. Stick to pray for five. I can understand that. My clergy can understand that. And there's a good chance my people can understand that. So whether, like Archbishop Munir, you look out of your window figuratively and there are the pyramids in Cairo, or whether, like Archbishop Nathaniel, you preside over a country where Mount Fuji is the central cultural point. Make it your own. Pray for five. And let's, next slide, light up the world in prayer again this year. And now we move on to my other colleagues. Thank you so much, Bob, for that um, inspirational talking uh, talk about what has happened for Thy Kingdom Come around the Anglican Communion and around the world. Um, I'd just really like to share with you very quickly um, some stats. As Chris uh, alluded to earlier, we've done some research. Um, Owen, can you possibly bring up the slides again? Sorry, poor Owen in the background. So when we thought about what we should be doing for Thy Kingdom Come this year, our heart for it was to think about what does the church need right now? How can we serve the church? As Archbishop Justin said earlier, it has been a year. We all know the impact this year has had on so many in so many different ways. Can I have the next slide, please, Owen? So we asked this question, as I say, how can Thy Kingdom Come serve the church? And we undertook some research which addressed this question. And the research was the pandemic and church growth, missional opportunities and challenges. And we have some headline, oh, sorry, the methodology. So we asked the questions over two weekends and we asked around 3,600 adults. Um, and of those 1,880 identified as Christians, if we think back to the 2011 um, uh, poll which was done um, we found in this country that there was around 59 percent of Christians so that would say that that's fairly okay 1,800 or 3,600 next slide please so the headlines so from this research which at some point we hope to be able to publish in the near future um, um, can I just sorry someone in the chat was talking about Owen and I got confused bear with me um, as I say um, the headlines so from this research the main headlines which have driven what we are doing this year and are underpinning the work which we um, hope to set out and do is this and this stat is amazing stat and I didn't believe it at first and then we looked at other polls that have been done with the Guardian or Tear Fund but 23% of adults in England say that they have engaged regularly with online church over the last year. Now that might be TV, that might be podcasts, um, that might be attending a church service online, but 23% of adults. Now we know people um, overstate positive behaviours because they were saying they did this regularly, which meant more than once a month. But however, this represents a huge missional opportunity for us and really made us believe at Thy Kingdom Come that our online offering this year, um, we had to put energy and time and prayer into what that should be. But it was a key part of our messaging for this year. We also know that family, children and youth ministry have been particularly impacted by the pandemic due to not being able to meet in person. So again, we put time, energy and resource into, especially into those areas. And finally, as Chris talked about earlier, some regular worshippers have struggled with online offering. So therefore, it's a really critical time for the church to engage the people who have drifted away during lockdown. Again, the parable of the lost coin and the parable of the lost sheep. Uh, can you just, can I go on main screen, Owen, please? Sorry for whoever's person I'm upsetting by saying Owen. <laughs> um, so some of the resources we've got this year are to help just that, just those different groups of people. First of all, we have produced, well, Archbishop Stephen has written this beautiful Thy Kingdom Come prayer journal. I don't know if you can see inside, it's, it's very beautifully designed and lots of space to write your thoughts. 
And it's really written in mind to help people remember for themselves again, the love of Jesus Christ. Now, we've really encouraging people to, uh, it's a critical time, as we say, for people to connect with those that maybe they haven't seen. But we think this prayer journal will be great for people that maybe you haven't seen, but also for your core congregation. Alongside it, we have a little bookmark, um, which can go alongside it, which you can write a little message on, to, of encouragement, of um, we'd lovely to see you soon, or how are you, just a connection. Now, we have 100,000 of these to give away for free this year. Um, and I would love to see these all go. We're offering them, do you have to just for free, but you have to pay postage and packaging. Alongside this, as 100,000 of these prayer journals to give away, as I say, we hope this will really help people remember God's love for them personally. We have 100,000 prayer maps. Now you might notice that this prayer map has got the wrong date on. Well, we had hundreds of thousands of these printed for last year, but COVID-19 stopped us doing that. So we've actually this year produced a sticker which will go straight over the top um, so if you have some left over from last year, be in touch with us, we'll send you a sticker, we're making it part of the activity. But this prayer map unfolds to A3, and it's great for families and children. Can you see? I don't know if you can see. I need an assistant, don't I? Um, but um, there's a bit where's Wally of activities to find things on the map and prayer every day. And with this map, there is um, an app and there's something called the Cheeky Pandas, but we'll come to that later because that's really the digital uh, in engagement with this to bring this to life in a new way. Can I have my next slide, please? Thanks, Owen. Owen deserves a medal after this. Well, doesn't he? Um, we also have the Thy Kingdom Come Novena, and this is praying the Psalms from Ascension till Pentecost. We really hope that this will be a really spiritually nourishing resource for all those members of your regular congregation. And then we also have the Cheeky Pandas prayer book. Um, alongside the prayer map I talked about earlier, there will be some videos that Kemi will bring in a minute when we talk about digital. But the Cheeky Pandas is a huge, huge part of our offering this year. It's a fun and interactive way for kids to be able to come closer to Jesus through prayer, through Bible stories, through songs. And also what we've done is we've produced a little prayer book, which we're trying to produce as cheaply as possible so they can be handed out en masse um, to people in your Sunday school, in your, um, in your toddler groups or in your schools. Um, now, what I'd really like to do um, is to hand over to Kemi. Kemi is, um, is head of uh, comms for Thy Kingdom Come, and she is going to explain all the stuff we have to help those who need to engage or would like to engage digitally with Thy Kingdom Come this year. Um, in the answer to your question, uh, while we're waiting to go to Kemi, yes, we are, Aberdeen, we are making everything available digitally. Thanks, Kemi. Thank you, Emma. Hello everybody, good afternoon. Um, I'm going to be talking a little bit about the digital resources we've developed for this year. So we have gone very, very big on digital for obvious reasons. And uh, Emma mentioned the Cheeky Pandas, which is our flagship family resource. And it's a Bible-based, fun-filled family resource, especially for children who are primary school aged. So we would say from seven to 11. And um, it's an 11 part video series. Each episode is 15 minutes long and includes um, animated Bible story, interviews of high profile leaders, uh, Christian voices like Bear Grylls, Jim Hunt, Archbishop Justin, um, Pete, Greg, Pete and Sammy Greg, Pastor Agu and Charlotte Iroquo, we've got lots of different voices in it. And, and it's some lovely music, worship songs, um, dance moves to go with it. It's fantastic, it's energetic, it's energizing, it's refreshing, it's um, spirit filled. And we're really excited about this resource because it works well in schools, um, it will work well in homes and it will work well in church, whether that's gathered worship or church at home. So um, at this point, um, is it okay if you could share this program sampler. So it's a kind of two to three minute program sampler of the Cheeky Pandas, so you can see what you can expect from it. Join in with the world of fun with the Cheeky Pandas, Cheeky Pandas. So much to do and so much to learn with the Cheeky Pandas, Cheeky Pandas. Hi, I'm Martha. And I'm Marcel. And welcome to the, the Cheeky, Cheeky Panda, Panda Show. Well, why don't we start by heading over to the Treehouse Studio and see what the pandas are up to. Today, 
We are observing the cheeky pandas in their natural habitat. It turns out it's not the misty mountains of China, but instead in a treehouse studio deep in the heart of England. Hey, Milo! Oh, hi, guys! The lasagna is in the oven and cooking. What's the matter, Milo? Well, I've lost my favourite guitar pick. No, not your custom-made one. Yes, that's the one. I can't find it anywhere. Pandas to the rescue! It's no good. It's definitely disappeared. I know what we can do. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? To, to the, the bamboo, bamboo phone. phone! Hello? I need to order a new gold-coloured guitar pick. Right away, please. Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's the, the Panda Roo delivery. delivery. Awesome. That is a big box, Milo. Your guitar pick must be very big. I'm glad to see no packaging was wasted. How oh, very unusual. They don't seem to have got Milo's order quite right. They're great, but they aren't the one. You know, pandas, this reminds me of a story in your Bibles that Jesus once told. Jesus tells a story about a shepherd who lost one of each sheep. And instead of just giving up, he left the other sheep that were all together and he went off and struggled through the hills and through the woods and eventually heard in the distance this sort of bah! noise. And it was a sheep. It was his sheep. And he got it, and he was so happy that he carried it back home and called all the neighbours round. They had a party to celebrate. This story reminds us of how Jesus will search for every one of us. When we wander away from the shepherd who is Jesus, he always comes to find us because he's custom made each one of us. And he never wants us to be separated from him. He loves you more than you could ever imagine. Uh, Milo, what's that in the middle of the lasagna? My missing guitar pick! I feel a new song coming on. To, to the, the song, song machine! This is a song about Jesus. A song about Jesus. A song about the Son of God, the man of miracles. This is a song about Jesus. A song about Jesus. heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Well, it is time for... Thank you so much for sharing that, Owen. As you can see, it's fun, it's vibrant, it's spirit-filled, and we hope it does really well. Um, so there's some supplementary resources that go with it. So you can use it in schools. So there'll be a downloadable activity pack you can use in schools or you can use in churches. Um, there is also a church service sheet. So you can um, you know, build a church service, a children's church service around it. Um, and we have lots of fun music to go with it as well. So there's a Spotify playlist with a Cheeky Pandas album on it. So great for your church party or for your home worship. And there'll also be um, some kind of Instagram filters. So you can actually try out different panda characters filters on Instagram and there'll be interactive quizzes and just lots of great digital ways to enjoy the Cheeky Pandas resource and get your children excited about it too. So moving on from children to youth. Um, we know that this year has been a very challenging year for lots of people, but for young people in particular, I feel like it's been very, very hard for them. Um, they've not been able to socialise with their friends, their education has been impacted, their mental health has been impacted. And I feel like it's a real time to be able to encourage them and inspire them and to um, help them to look up and look out and look to the future. So the youth reflections that we've got are 11 videos that we've done in collaboration with the Archbishop of York's Youth Trust to get uh, 11 young people 
and I say when I say young people, I mean young adults under 40, you know, you know, young being very um, loose term, uh, to talk about the different daily themes. And um, we've got different voices. We've got Governor B, we've got um, worship leader Ellie Lime Bear, we've got uh, former rugby player Jamie Jones Buchanan, we've got um, Phoebe Parkin, the Methodist Youth President, and they're all sharing different reflections um, based on the different themes. And alongside that, there will be um, a discussion panel for each of those different daily themes. So you can actually show the video, discuss the themes of the video in your youth group. So it's suitable for youth groups, church youth groups, it's suitable for colleges as part of your PSHE or kind of extra extracurricular kind of activities. Or you can just use it at home. You can get some of your young people together at home, some of your friends, and, um, and just discuss the different themed videos. So we're going to show you a quick promo now um, that you can see. <laughs> Hi. 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 Hello. My name's Grace. I'm Pippa. It's Ellie Lyon Bear here. I'm Jamie Jones Buchanan and I'm an ex-professional rugby league player who's had the privilege of fulfilling my boyhood dream. Today I wanted to talk to you about silence. I'll give you some nuggets on reasons to praise. There is such breakthrough and freedom when we say sorry. And there's a balance we need to get between thanking God for the past blessings and trusting Him for future provision. I really encourage you, I really believe in you. Get into God's Word, seek out His will. This is the heart of all praise and worship. Go for it, have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon. Fantastic, thanks very much Owen. So as you can see, very uplifting videos. Um, I've noticed in the chat there's a few questions about when we'll be able to share these videos with you. We should be able to share them with you in the next month or so. I'd say before, well before Thy Kingdom Come, you get these videos. So if you're on our mailing list, you'll get that information. Um, and all the videos will be subtitled, that's our standard practice. And I'm sure we can get BSL done for some of these videos as well. Um, so uh, that's our exciting youth resource. We've also got a digital escape room as well. So a fun activity uh, for young people. And so moving on from youth to everyone, these are our, ma our main 11 day videos for Thy Kingdom Come. And this year we've actually got brand new videos for every single day, um, which is really exciting. And we've got again, a wonderful range of voices from different denominations and different traditions. Um, so some of those voices include the Archbishop of York, Stephen Cotterell, who's filming right now as we speak for this year's Thy Kingdom Come. Um, we've got Archbishop Angelos, he's the Coptic Orthodox Archbishop of London, and he will be uh, sharing a video this year. Um, and we've got some other videos like Hidden Heroes of the Pandemic, we're going to be show sharing some of the voices of frontline workers, um, but not necessarily frontline workers, the obvious ones, like which you We'll see NHS workers and, and what have you, but you know, cleaners, carers, and those who really are the hidden heroes of the pandemic, we want to celebrate and honor them, and their video will be included in the 11 days too. So um, we've also got another worship um, video with LICC, we've teamed up with them and it's a music video and it's uh, based on a lovely civic hymn called Your Kingdom Come, um, which will be releasing at Easter. Um, and other voices include a lovely story of an ordinary man with an extraordinary prayer life. Um, I think he was a lifelong Christian, prayed for his family, they became Christian, prayed for his children, they became Christian, prayed for his grandchildren, they are Christians, prayed for strangers that he met they became Christians. It's like the most beautiful, inspiring um, story. And that is one of our videos for this year. And another video that we've got that we're very, very excited about, and it's the last video from me, is from Bishop uh, Rose Hudson Wilkin. She's the first black female bishop in the Church of England, and she's the current Bishop of Dover. So we're just going to share a snippet of her video so you can see what's in store. My name is Rose Hudson Wilkin. I am the Bishop of Dover, the first black female bishop in the Church of England. <laughs> but right at the beginning, when I felt my call to ministry, 14 years old, my bishop then, the Bishop of Jamaica said to me, we're Anglicans, we don't do that. <laughs> I didn't believe him. But I went back to God in prayer and I said, God, I believe you have called me. So I'm going to be faithful. You know, I'm here, I'm ready. 
whenever. I will be faithful. I'm going to leave you to work out all the other things to make it happen. And someone once asked me, Rose, how do you keep going? And, and I say, I keep going because I know who has called me. And I think that's what's made the difference. So that's one of our new videos for this year. Um, and alongside our 11 videos, the award-winning TKC app is back this year and it's available in nine languages. And it um, will include some audio content from um, Lectio 365, which is the 24 seven prayers um, audio app. Their, their daily audio app is fantastic app. And there'll be some audio reflections from the Archbishop of Canterbury, from Pete Gregg and from Carla Harding, who's the UK um, director for 24 seven prayer. So we're really excited about that. And uh, before I finish, We've got lots of stuff for churches to be able to do their own online services. So we've got things like recorded prayers, blessings and hymns, customizable video templates, lots of videos over the years, about I think 200 videos on our YouTube channel, which you can use in your own services. Some of them are in different languages and some of them are along the different themes of Thy Kingdom Come. And um, we've also got downloadable um, ideas for your church and ways that you can be involved in Thy Kingdom Come, whether you're a church or you're a family or an individual. So with that being said, I'm going to pass on to Jean Kerr, who's going to talk more about how you can do Thy Kingdom Come in your local church context. Thank you, Kemi. Um, I'm Jean Kerr and I'm the National Diocesan Coordinator for Thy Kingdom Come. And I've had the joy of running their Inspire and Equip events all over the country. And one of the deep joys for me over the last year was that uh, because we had an early start, I could get from Carlisle right down to the Channel Islands, leading Inspire and Equip events. And, you know, it was such an honour to meet so many committed Christians praying for their families and friends. It was a deep joy to hear of what their churches were doing, but also to catch their tears as some of them prayed desperately for their children and grandchildren to become Christians to know the love of God for themselves. And so, uh, you know, the virus has done many things, hasn't it, this year? It shut down many things, but the one thing it hasn't done is shut down prayer. In fact, we've known that there have been huge increases in people praying, uh, huge increases in the number of people praying. And I want to say there couldn't be a better time to launch Thy Kingdom Come 2021. You know, people, I think, are looking for inspiration and hope. And the way that we're working Thy Kingdom Come this year, uh, we've provided resources and opportunities that absolutely everybody can use and can apply in their setting. Whether they, you know, you want to use them digitally or whether you wanted the printed copies ordered and delivered to your home. So in this section, the only slides that you'll get will be at the end uh, when we'll just do a recap. So you don't have to scribble stuff down, but just try and take it in. So the first thing I want you to know, we will be holding another uh, international, another national webinar called Thy Kingdom Come for your local church. And that's open to everyone. And we'll go in that webinar into more detail about Thy Kingdom Come in the local setting and also introduce people to the ever popular prayer activities that we'll be providing this year, obviously in a COVID safe way. So um, there will also be the need then for you to inspire your prayer groups and your people of prayer, the local people that you're in contact with to sign up for that webinar. So perhaps you'd like to look out for the dates for that. And it's really important to remember clergy don't have to do all this. And I'm sure some of them listening now will be very grateful to hear that. You know, we are all equal partners in delivering thy kingdom come in this prayer initiative. Secondly, this year, so that nobody misses out, I want to offer prayer uh, engagement via Zoom. Now, this doesn't mean I'm getting into the marriage business or anything like that, but it's about providing the opportunity for smaller numbers of people from one church or a cluster of churches or from maybe a churches together group to meet on Zoom so that together we can tailor what Thy Kingdom Come looks like in your local context. So a small group experience where specifically local questions can be answered. And I pray God I can help walk with you 
into that situation to help you be creative in ways that you may take your full part in Thy Kingdom Come this year. And all you have to do for that is to email me and we'll find a time and a date that absolutely suits you. And my email will appear at the end of this part of the presentation. Thirdly, it might be that input into your Sunday service, you would welcome uh, a short video from me, or if it was possible, even a visit, where I might come and help you inspire congregations to engage in thy kingdom come. Again, please just email. So you're in a church, it might be a large one, it might be a small one, you've heard about the resources, you've seen some of them, you've heard about the huge digital array as well, but you know your congregation. So inspire them to try and use a range of resources and be prepared to be surprised who exactly would want to use the escape room experience. Why don't you sort out a group and you do it with them, just have some fun together. I am now committing the TKC team to do it together as a team experience. So Emma's talked about the prayer journal. Um, and as a church and the adventure map, these are our big giveaways. And really, it's the opportunity for the local church to give this away as an invitation, perhaps to come back to church or to a special event. And particularly, will you notice those people who you haven't seen on Zoom, you haven't seen in live church, or you just simply lost touch with over the year? It doesn't matter what the reason is. So being COVID aware, ask your folk to deliver it personally in a doorstep visit. Deliver it also to any non-church contacts you may have, because these people are also waiting for inspiration and hope. Be aware also that some people, because of shielding or other issues, may have actually lost a bit of social confidence. They will need some help in regaining that. So be prepared to spend a little bit of time with them on the doorstep. And if they wish to come to a service or if they wish to know more about the booklet you've given them, just be prepared to take a bit of time. And if they'd like you to come with them to church, please do that as well. Then there's the novena. Now, I help lead um, a congregation on a Wednesday of about 50 older people. And when my kingdom come first started, um, I tentatively said, would anybody like this little booklet? And of course, they all grabbed my hands off. And then the next year, before it was anywhere near thy kingdom come time, they were saying, Jean, where's our booklet? Where's the novena? So this year, the novena is again a gift. It's a gift into our congregation to inspire them to endure in prayer. Now, I don't know about you, but I think sometimes we have taken Father God and made him some kind of Father Christmas God where we reel out a list and we expect instant answers. What I've learned from my older congregation is they have a great endurance in prayer. And we need to inspire people to keep going so that they too are part of this great movement worldwide of prayer. So you've seen the adventure prayer map and you've seen the cheeky panda stuff that comes behind it. And it's a great cheeky little resource, isn't it? So why not host a Cheeky Panda event? You could do it online or you can do it in church because the 11 family service outlines can be done in both situations. And yes, we will try and get them subtitled. Alongside those family service outlines, we've also got um, activity packs. Very simple, but really helping families to engage with the topic when they are at home. My daughter's a priest and she found during this pandemic that her online family gatherings have shown more consistency of attendance and deeper engagement. And she always sends out a goodie bag and an activity pack to the families beforehand. And she's noticed something else, that these family times online have become intergenerational. So the joy of the Panda materials is that you can re-engage some of the families that may have drifted away and through the year by using them as different family services, you might start to recreate a real sense of belonging again. Now, nobody's mentioned merch. 
For those who don't know, it's stuff you buy to back up your message. And we're going to have little pandas, each with their prayer pack and each with a little prayer book inside it. Now, alongside this, why don't you offer the promo to your local school? Maybe an invitation for more assemblies might come your way. And all this excellent, exciting stuff goes alongside all the generic prayer activities. You know, every church, I believe, can do 24 hours of prayer if they do it at home. Let me tell you a quick story. I was in a church two years ago and the vicar stood up and he said, we're going to do 24-7 prayer. And I looked around the congregation and mainly they were quite elderly. And I thought to myself, no way, you're never going to manage this. And then he simply said this. Now, we're going to start with the first 24 hours. Now, I know you, he said, and I know that some of you get up in the night to go to the loo. And the old ladies on the back row were nudging each other and saying, how does he know this? And then he said, now, while you go to the loo or go to drink of water, whatever it is you're doing, why don't you pray for five people? And they looked at each other and they nodded and I could hear them whispering, we could do this. And then he said, and I know some of you get up more than once in the night, so that's double time for you to pray. And then I know some of you wash up and some of you load a dishwasher. And in all those times through the day as he went through, he found times that his congregation could pray for five. And by the end of the, the service, the whole first 24 hours was filled up with people who were willing to pray. So know your congregation and work within their life challenges and their lifestyles. I want to bring back the old intercessions as well, the weekly intercessions. We so quickly forget that this is an excellent time where we can raise awareness of thy kingdom come. To start as soon as you want, to heighten expectation, to reinforce a pattern of prayer. And please, if you are a leader in any respect, will you pray yourself for thy kingdom come and pray for your five? Will you pray it on any social media platform you have access to? We have heard how many people are watching us, are engaging in our worship. They need to hear you also say, I am praying for people to know the love of God for themselves. And they too will want to know the love of God. I would urge you to put it in your prayer sheet, your magazines, your notice book, anywhere you like. But just let people know that you too are praying. You're praying for people to come back. You're praying for people who have never known the love of God and missing out on this great gift. So please, my plea is, will you get a sense of the energy and passion of God once again for his world? Then something else that my husband and I have just started doing. We live in Deal, we're near the seaside, and we have our daily walk. It's a simple thing, daily exercise. We walk past people and some of them nod or smile, and some of them even step off the pavement to, to let us pass by. What we've started doing is simply asking God to bless them. We do it as we see people coming towards us, we do it as we pass people quietly, asking God to bless them. You know, thy kingdom come prayer movement is greater than any of us praying simply for our five people. You do not know if anybody else is praying for the people that you pass in the street. Your simple request to God to bless them is part of God's chain reaction to enable them to know his love for themselves. Today, we sat on the seafront and within 10 minutes, 100 people had passed us. 100 people we asked God to bless. And then we come to Pentecost. I hope you're getting excited for it because then we hope we will have more freedom of movement and it's party time and it's Thanksgiving time and it's time to remember so please, will you use your outside spaces, whether they are large and beautifully kept or a bit concretey and cruddy? 
a Thanksgiving tree with a simple method of helping people both inside and outside the church give thanks for lives no longer seen on earth. And why not hold a really great community party as part of your Pentecost praise celebrations? And where possible, please do it outside. As the Archbishop said, the country has seen us feeding those who needed feeding. They have seen us with debt counselling. They have seen us with creative ways of keeping connection and worship going. And now perhaps it needs to see that real hope in Jesus is available and outside of the church walls. So let me ask, how will your church really celebrate Pentecost? Who will be invited? And remembering the parable of the great feast, who will come? And will it be accessible for all? So could we go to the recap slide, please, Owen? Thank you. So in the recap, there'll be a national webinar, Thy Kingdom Come, for the local church, open to also watch for dates. And these local Zoom engagements for smaller groups of people, no group too small, all you need to do is email me on the address that you see on the screen now. Next slide, please. You know, people are eager for inspiration and hope, and we have that with us. There's something for everyone in the resources, whatever size or shape of congregation you have, both digitally and in print format. They will all be available on the website. Could we have the next slide, please? Don't forget daily exercise praying. If you think you have a small number of people to pray for, just walk down your street and see who passes you and pray for them. The next slide, please. So use your outside space, party as best you can, and make sure it's accessible to all. And that is a big challenge for us as a church. And if I could leave you with the last little bit, prayer is not limited by any virus, only by our forgetfulness that we are and God are in this work together. I'll wait for you all your emails. Thank you so much. Now I'm going to pass you over to Barry, who'll talk a little bit more about his local church. Well, good afternoon. Really good to be with you. My name is Barry. I'm a church leader in Market Harbour. And it's been my joy for the last five years to work with the team uh, who are putting together Thy Kingdom Come. Uh, just we're going to finish in a few minutes. Apologies, we're running a few minutes over. We'll finish with your questions. But before then, just for a few minutes, uh, a few vignettes from the local church. And frankly, we could share, I'm sure, any of the hundreds of thousands of stories uh, represented uh, by those of us here today. But here in Market Harbour, which is in uh, Leicestershire, glorious Leicestershire, we are a team of churches with smaller and larger churches, town and uh, village, kind of central Anglican, some church plants. And um, the team in Harbour have been involved in Thy Kingdom Come since it started. But it was really last year, actually, through COVID, that we noticed something quite different, a step change, if you like. Uh, wonderful team, Vicar Allison, and a lovely ecumenical team from across the town got together and put huge creativity and energy into what we might do uh, through lockdown. And what we noticed was that um, whether for helplessness, whether because of time on our hands, whatever it may be, um, uh, COVID pushed people onto their knees in prayer in a way that we hadn't seen in previous years of Thy Kingdom Come. And it strangely, I think, made it easier for some to participate um, than had been the case before. The expectation that all of us would be needed, that all of us have something to share. And Alison and the team suggested that for the first time, rather than a, a prayer service for an hour here, an hour there, or a 24-hour prayer, that we might try across our churches in Harbour a continual prayer 24 hours a day for the full 11 days. Uh, and I'll be honest, I was somewhat hesitant when it was suggested. I thought this might fall on the shoulders of just a few committed people and would feel guilty and heavy and we're tired already. And yet, uh, 
to my astonishment, a bit like the, the boy that brings what he can offer to God, uh, to Jesus for lunch, and Jesus multiplies it. So we found all sorts of people coming out of the woodwork. So, well, I could do an hour here, I could do an hour there, critically praying as they could, not as they can't, um, and using the excellent TKC resources and using the really great 24-7 prayer calendar uh, before the week started, almost every hour for the 11 days and nights were full, which was astonishing in itself. But then even more than that, to hear the stories as people prayed with such creativity, as they prayed for others to know Christ, as they prayed and they served hand in hand. Uh, wonderful to see people growing in confidence. None of that would have happened had we not, or the team had led us in stepping out in faith. Not just for us in our own household, our kids uh, insisted on signing us for the 3 to 4 a.m. slot one day uh, and insisted we go and had a prayer breakfast in a local park and prayed for our area. So moving to hear young people lead us in prayer. And so I think I'd really encourage you. It's easy to think what we can't do, that we're tired and exhausted, but maybe just stepping out, using the really excellent resources just a little bit further than it feels like we may be able to do in our human strength and hopefully be surprised that God will meet us as we do and multiply it beyond anything we can ask or imagine. With that, we're going to finish with some questions and Emma's going to lead us. Thank you so much, Barry, and thank you for sort of everyone who's stayed on. I know we've gone over time. Um, Owen, are you going to be leading us in the questions? I hope you are, rather than me. Yeah, I'm right here. <laughs> Um, so yeah, there's been a number of questions coming in. Lots, lots of questions around the practicalities of uh, when resources will be available, um, how they can be accessed. Those kind of questions. Uh, video. When are the videos going to be available? How are we going to get hold of the booklets? Those kind of things. Can you perhaps answer those questions? Yeah, it'd be great if maybe um, some of my colleagues aren't muted too. Kemi, do you want to answer that one? <laughs> yeah, I do. So the videos we're working on them as we speak, and they should all be ready. They should all be ready by mid-April. Uh, most of the videos should be ready by then. And when they are ready, they'll be up on YouTube and on Vimeo, so you can download them and use them in your church context. Um, the printed resources, they are ready. They are ready as digital assets and they need to be, um, they need to go to print. So you'll get those soon. The Cheeky Pandas is the only thing that might take a bit, little bit longer, which will be ready by the end of April. So we'll have some of the episodes available earlier on, but the whole collection of um, 11 episodes, which take a really long time to make, will be ready by the end of April. Um, but if you're on our mailing list, you'll be up to date with when these resources are available. Um and just to say, Matthew, um, in the chat, um, the promo is available now um, and the sample or sort of um, episode will be out tomorrow, we hope, on social media. If you watch the Archbishop's uh, social media account, you should see um, the episode sampler. And we are hoping that people will be able to run these week on week, which is why we are hoping to launch them at Easter so people can have like week one from, the, from Easter Sunday. And... Um. And perhaps another question uh, just about uh, people are asking something about gatherings. Uh, I, I guess that it's difficult to answer those questions for lots of people here, physical gatherings, but then also virtual gatherings. Uh, is there a virtual beacon event? I think maybe that's what the webinar was, but maybe you can explain a bit more about that. Yeah, so on the physical gatherings, obviously, um, we uh, are just encouraging people to follow whatever the guidelines um, and the guidance is. Um, we obviously have to absolutely adhere to whatever that guidance is. Um, the, um, there will be something that happens on Pentecost Sunday, but watch this space to hear more about that in future. Um, and then some, somebody was asking, uh, some people questions questions about um, how they might use the resources, you know, are they uh, suitable for assemblies, the Cheeky Pandas ones, for example, are all the resources available? Are they all uh, usable for different denominations or are there other ones that other denominations are going to produce, do you know, or is this the, the whole collection? So for the Cheeky Pandas, um, there are resources for schools. So there's the activity pack, which you can download and you can use in your school. Um, you can use the videos in school assemblies. Um, so you can use them in schools and you can use them in the church context or you can use them at home. Um, resources for other, for other denominations. We have Catholic resources. So the Journey with Mary devotional, we've had the last few years and accompanying audio content with that. And we have the morning, evening and night prayer of the church, which is also a Catholic resource. And I believe the Methodists have 
of the resource that they're creating. Kingdom Come, everyone might know a bit more. Um, sorry, Kemi. Um, um, so, Jean, do you want to talk into this at all around the resources? Um, yeah, thank you, Emma. Certainly, people are asking, I notice in the chat, you know, about the Novena. I mean, we will be, you will be able to order this um, and have it delivered to wherever you want. And the resources for the uh, prayer journal, um, you know, they will go through lead, lead clergy, everybody, they will get a letter. So um, the idea is really you keep your eye, your eye on the website. If you're on our database and somebody's asked how you get on that, if you email me your details, I'll put you on the get you put on the database. Once you're on the database, you should have all the upgrades that we can give you. So you'll be up to date with everything that's happening. The family service stuff that we're doing around the cheeky pandas uh, would make a very good holiday club if you wanted to do it all in one go. If you've got that kind of energy, of course, not just this year, but next year. But it, it, it will work really well whether you're doing something in church and you've still got people on Zoom at home as well. And um, I, it's tested my cooking skills, shall we say, because within the activities, there's a craft activity and a cooking challenge, as well as all sorts of other things. So it's great fun, great fun. And I think if you are worried about your children's work, this is an essential for you to get them back. And just to answer as well on the ecumenical front, all of our resources this year are absolutely suitable uh, mm. for, across the denominations. Um, we have got some rather more bespoke. So for the family services, we've actually got um, a pack which is suitable for the Catholic Church, which has the right sort of liturgy in it that would be required to run it as a family service in the Catholic, as we have um, for the same thing for the for um, the Anglican Church as well, and one for just general use. Mm. Um, and Emma, if I may, I saw quite a number of people asking in the chat about signing up for the mailing list, which you can do as well as Jean says on the Thy Kingdom Come website. But of course, it's not just one person per church that can sign up for that. Um, by being on the mailing list, you get the daily videos, all sorts of encouragements, and also the feedback and the surveys afterwards, which uh, I say as a local church leader involved, um, really does shape what the resources are for the coming year. This is a team that I've noticed listen to the local church more than almost any other I've been involved with. So do encourage all your congregations to sign up for the mailing list, not just the church leaders. Yeah, I think uh, lots of things pointing people towards the uh, uh, the website uh, as, a, as a key source for signing up and finding things, that's great. Um, but there's some questions about, um, probably this is the last question, I think, um, just based on time, but questions about other languages, whether things have been translated into other yeah. languages, or yeah. how that works. And then there was also some questions about copyright and use of things in, in streaming services, which is a new question, but an important one. Bob, do you want to go? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, it's being translated, the, the prayer journal is being translated into French, into Maori, into Spanish, into Portuguese, uh, and into Japanese. And as a result of watching the chats, I'll be sending it to my friend Dev Siri in uh, Colombo, Sri Lanka, and we'll see what it can be done there. If anyone wants the English version to be able to translate it, so it's available uh, in their own local community, that's not a problem. Um, if they send us a wonderful email, we will get it to them. Um, it is about making it your own. So uh, some of them will be on available online because we have translated stuff there. But if you want to do a print run in <coughs> the other side of the world from England, that's just fantastic. And also, just as Jean's offering um, training uh, in England locally, I am more than happy to get up at three in the morning and do a, a Zoom or whatever uh, for a group of folks in Australia or South Africa if we can do inspire and enable for them. So let us know and we'll make it happen. Uh, there's just been something in the chat as well about getting resources to the Falkland Islands. Um, my husband and I spent three months in the Falkland Islands, so we're in personal contact there and we're trying to work out whether the what's the best way to get materials to them. But so far, we've managed to get it. So whoever was asking that question, we're on it. Thank you. Thanks, Emma. There are many uh, questions I'm sure that we haven't answered, but I think that many of them will, will come through on uh, through the further communications and through the website. So maybe we'll leave the questions there and I'll hand back to you. 
Thank you so much. This is the famous Owen who we keep uh, asking to help us throughout this webinar. I just would like to thank you all for coming today, for bearing with us, for running over time and for praying for us as I know so many of you do. Um, I'd like to end in prayer now, but before I do that, just to say, please don't hesitate to be in touch. We are here as a team to do anything we can to serve. We um, try and give away all that we do and work with people who give away all that they do to further the work of the kingdom of God. So let us come now and pray together. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this work that you have given us to do. Through this, Lord Jesus, I pray that we see many more people come into your kingdom, many more people come to know you personally, to know your transforming love in their lives. I pray, Lord, that this year that we see revival. And I pray for the team as they continue to do your work and all the people here on this webinar today. Please bless them and keep them safe. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming. Please be in touch if we can be of any help. And um, my new boss would tell me off if I don't say this, but this is part of the E&D webinar series. Please watch out for more webinars to come, which we hope will aspire and equip you in your work. Thank you so much.